This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 219. Let's hear it for the control freaks. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hey there. Welcome on in today, folks. If your kids are in school, if they're in college, they're well out of school, right? If they're in K through 12, are you about near the end? Did you make it? (laughs) Our last day of school around here is tomorrow by the time you're listening to this. And I got to be honest, I'm not always ready for summer. Um, It just means all my people are home and... uh, the thing, you know, routine and schedules and everything just changed so much. But I have to admit, I'm kind of ready for it this year. And yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, that typical thing that we say, can't believe it's here. And I kind of can. We'll talk some more about time probably as we get into the fall. Not so much time management because we cannot manage time, but we can manage ourselves around time. And instead of being so gobsmacked and surprised by the passage of time, I'm a little more interested in being present and practicing present moment awareness so that we can savor time. So, yes, time is passing. Yes, unofficial kickoff to summer. Here we go. End of school, Memorial Day weekend for those of us in the States. And then it's into June. So, ready or not, right? All right. Today, I want to talk about control freaks, which is, you know, it's all of us to some extent because we're humans, right? And one of the ways human beings create a sense of safety is by creating a sense of predictability or certainty or having a say in the things that are happening in their world. And one of the surest ways to do that stuff is by grabbing onto control. Well, at least we try to grab on to control, right? Because really, control is a bit of an illusion, right? We're kind of delusional when we get really into control. The term control freak, this first appeared in the late 60s. So this is a relatively new idea. It's a newish way for us to talk about ourselves and each other. (laughs) So charming. And it's important to note this is a colloquialism. That's tricky to say. This isn't a diagnosis. Okay, it's not an official psychological term. But you know for sure all about control freaks, right? We can all identify with that idea at least a little bit, at least in some element of our lives personally, and you for sure know control freaks. I mean, we're everywhere. You know how it feels when you're trying to grasp at control, when you're trying to exert control over something, and I'm guessing you also know how it feels when someone in your orbit is grabbing for control themselves, right? Or even worse, when they're trying to control you. So yeah, why do we do this? Well, I want to use a big chunk of our time in this conversation today to just normalize the heck out of being a control freak, to remind you that this isn't a personal failing or quirk or weirdo thing that only you do. This is a very human thing that humans do. Life is hard. The world can be really scary. And cultivating a sense of stability and security and safety, it's key. And control seems like a pretty direct path to safety. So we try for it, 
right? Even when it's futile, we try for it anyway. Now, like I said, the term control freak is just a casual colloquial term, but it for sure has psychological roots. So it may be helpful, especially if you recognize some control freak tendencies in yourself, to just reflect and see if any of these roots resonate with you, right? One root is OCD. That probably makes sense, right? Another is perfectionism. We're all my perfectionists. Yeah, these things, it, it makes sense. These things go hand in hand, right? Now, another one is codependency. Like if you have a fear of abandonment, it could prompt you to try to control the people or the environments that you believe that you're dependent upon. See, that kind of makes sense, right? And you're going to be shocked. Another root for control freaks is those of us who struggle with anxiety. Because think about it. Anxiety can be defined as a fear of the unknown. So what do we do? We try to control the hell out of it, right? If we can control the future, the people, the way things are going to go down, then we can feel better. We think, anyway, that this is a way out of anxiety. This is how so much of anxiety goes, by the way. We think we have a way to manage it, right? We drink at it. We eat at it. We overschedule and overwork ourselves so that we're distracted from it. And we control things and people and the future. Like we think we can manage our emotions this way. We think we can manage anxiety this way. Have you tried this? Have you noticed that this is something that you want to try? (laughs) Right? All right. A couple ideas for you. This first one comes from Melody Beatty. This is from her book, Codependent No More. This quote goes, worrying, obsessing, and controlling are illusions. They are tricks we play on ourselves. I love the simplicity and the truth in this. Worrying, obsessing, and controlling are tricks we play on ourselves. Believe me, if this stuff worked, I would teach you that. (laughs) Seriously, if we could control other people or the situations and circumstances of our lives, I would totally teach that. If worrying prevented bad things from happening, you can be sure I'd be teaching that. We'd have like worry workshops. We'd just prevent bad things from happening altogether. It'd be fun, right? If obsessing meant that you could figure things out and guarantee certain outcomes or results, like again, total no brainer. I'd be all for that. But they don't work. (laughs) I know you've tried this. I know you've noticed And we keep trying anyway, don't we? So a few ideas to get present in the moment when you're actively worried, actively obsessing, or actively trying to grab control where you don't have it. One is take a deep breath and then take a few more deep breaths. Get just a moment of perspective and notice that you are going down the path that you tend to go down that worried or obsessed or controlling path, yep, that's happening. You don't even need to change anything. Just notice it. Becoming aware of it happening, your tendency to go there, that alone is invaluable. Breathe. Notice it. Breathe again. Now, something else that can be helpful is naming it. Just say it out loud. I do this around my house, particularly because I think this is especially useful, particularly if I'm with my kids, because it helps to normalize all of this. And then they get the benefit of hearing and feeling me walking myself through my own struggle with it. So seriously, pretend like you're a sports commentator and that you're just calling the shots as you see them. I see that I'm wanting to worry about whether this is going to get done or not. But I'm also aware it's not useful for me to worry about it. Worry will have no effect on the outcome. Really, just name it like that. Say it out loud. Or it could go like this. 
I see that I'm trying to control this conversation by bringing an agenda to it. I'm trying to convince these people to agree with me, maybe that, so that I can feel better about a decision I'm making. I'm trying to guarantee what's going to happen in that situation so that I have some certainty about the future. Right? And it just doesn't work. There is no control. So recognizing that you're trying to get control and just the awareness that that's what's happening, that you don't have control, but that you're seeking it in an ill-fated attempt to feel better. Yeah? Okay, which brings me to this idea. This is a quote. This is from Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote this in his book, The Four Agreements. It is when we lose control that we repress the emotions, not when we are in control. Um, yes. So we're going to pivot just slightly here to talk about control regarding emotions instead of controlling other people in the world around us. This is a different focus control wise. And it's wiser because it's where we have control. We can't control anything outside of us. But the good news is we have far greater control internally than we ever give ourselves credit for. And I want to acknowledge this. We grab for control where we don't have it, which is out in the external world. But truly, we aren't out of control because we can't get control out there. We feel out of control when we don't take control in here. We have so much sway over our internal experience of the world, how we think, how we feel, how we approach the whole thing. And we feel out of control when we let go there, not when we let go of trying to control the external stuff. You with me? Is this making sense? So here's another way to say it and think about it. John C. Maxwell, he said this in his book, uh, it's called Failing Forward, which is all about making the most of your mistakes. He wrote, why worry about things you can't control when you can keep yourself busy controlling the things that depend on you? (laughs) I mean, let's be honest, we all have enough to do inside of ourselves. Our work is cut out for us, right? Keep your eyes on your own paper and take care of yourself. You don't need to take care of the rest of the world. All right, let's take another turn here. Another way of thinking about this, a way that hints at freedom. And I am very interested in helping you feel free, free to be yourself, free to live the life you want for yourself, free to know yourself. All right, again, this comes from the boss of codependency. This one comes from Melody Beatty again. And she wrote this. This is in a different book. It's called The Language of Letting Go. She said this, if we weren't trying to control whether a person liked us or his or her reaction to us, what would we do differently? If we weren't trying to control the course of a relationship, what would we do differently? If we weren't trying to control another person's behavior, How would we think, feel, speak, and behave differently than we do now? What haven't we been letting ourselves do while hoping that self-denial would influence a particular situation or person? Are there some things we've been doing that we'd stop? How would we treat ourselves differently? Would we let ourselves enjoy life more and feel better right now? Would we stop feeling so bad? Would we treat ourselves better? If we weren't trying to control, what would we do differently? Make a list, then do it. What? Okay, this. (laughs) My goodness. Basically, what would you do, say, how would you live, feel, What would you try? Who would you be if you weren't trying to control how someone else thinks or feels about you? If you weren't trying to control the relationship or job 
or future or ideas or any particular situation or person. This is a remarkably freeing way to go about your life. If you were to just let it all go, let life be life. Let people think and feel the way they think and feel. If you were to really get that you don't have to control that, that you cannot control that, and let it all go, what would you do? How would you live? Like, did your mind just spin out a bit? Yeah, (laughs) right? This is some good stuff right here. My mind spins out about this for sure. Like, completely. It is so ingrained in us to consider other people's thoughts and feelings, right? The people-pleasing, the perfectionism, the stress and overwhelm and anxiety we all live with pretty much day in and day out. It's baked into us from birth that we need to consider it all. And how we humans try and consider it all is by trying to control it all. It's a facade that we have that kind of control anywhere but inside ourselves. Which, by the way, no one really tells us. Right? The cultural conditioning is that we need to please the people around us and conform to societal roles and live up to the expectations mapped out for us. Can you see it? That we need to control all of that stuff, the stuff outside of us, that that is where our control and power could possibly lie. And it doesn't. You've tried. Like if your power were out there, you'd have found it by now. You'd have taken over the world or you'd be napping on an island somewhere, right? Depending on the day. So just a reminder of where we started. Let's come back to the top. I want to normalize all of this control freak behavior because we all do it. There is nothing wrong with you. Just remember, this is optional. Meaning you can opt out. Meaning, more specifically, when you find yourself trying to control the world out there, the people and events and conversations and the whole future. Don't, (laughs) right? You can't. But the place you have enormous control, where we usually forget to place our attention and our energy, is internally. You get to choose the thoughts you want to think on purpose. You get to choose where you want to put your mind. You get to choose how you show up right? The words, the actions, the behaviors you create in this world, that is all completely and totally under your control. And it's so much more helpful to look there. Keep your eyes on your own paper and work from the inside out control-wise. Heck, embrace your control freak nature if you want. Just turn it inwards where you actually have control, which is only and always ever about yourself. All right, my control freak friends, (laughs) there you go. I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. If you're in the States, enjoy this unofficial kickoff to the summer. And I will be back next week for more Transforming Anxiety. Please, please take a quick moment to rate and review the podcast. I'd be so grateful. And then until next week, please take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you are creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fierce calm project.